My name is Marco Castillo, English language teacher and academic at Universidad Católica Silva Enriquez. This presentation is on how to teach listening in an English as a foreign language classroom. Let's begin. Two chapters were used to construct the presentation, which are available to you in the references list at the end and on our learning platform. Let's start by defining what is listening. It is one of the four language skills together with writing, reading, and speaking. It is a receptive skill like reading. It involves responding to input, meaningful auditory signals, rather than producing them. In other words, it is a skill in charge of making sense of the meaningful sounds of language. To do this, we need to understand the context, language, and our knowledge of the world. Beliefs behind the listening activity. In order to learn to listen and be able to understand the target language, you need to be exposed to it. This is connected to the input, intake, and output hypotheses I am sure you have studied before. If you think about your Spanish or L1 learning process, you are surrounded by input coming from parents, teachers, TV, among others, allowing your brain time to process the sounds that meant something for the people in the context you heard them. There was a point in which you understood the rules and started producing language output. It has also been reported that when communicating in everyday life, people engage 9% in writing activities, 16% in reading, 30% in speaking, 45% in listening. This last number is crucial to give listening a major role in your lessons. Now, let's do an experiment. We are going to see the way our brain processes information when listening to the sounds of a language. Listen to the following utterance and try to see which picture, A or B, is the one being mentioned in the sentence. Listen. Yesterday, a jumper that lay on the ground was clutching his ankle and moaning softly. In order to decide whether A or B is the correct alternative to the question, our brain is involved in two main processes. Bottom up is, in, is the one in charge of decoding linguistic features thanks to people's knowledge of phonological, lexical, syntactic parts of the language, among others. In our reading video, we learned that this was called systemic knowledge. Top-down process, which is the one that listeners go through when inferring meaning out of the contextual clues that are essential for meaning-making process. To do this, listeners' prior knowledge of the world is crucial. In our reading video, we learned that this was called schematic knowledge. Let's listen to the utterance one more time. Yesterday, a jumper that lay on the ground was clutching his ankle and moaning softly. Up to the word ground, both pictures A and B were perfect candidates to answer this puzzle. Thanks to our bottom-up process, we're able to recognize the sounds of the words and match them with the pictures in that way, lexicon was easily represented in our minds. At the same time, this first part of the sentence follows a clear tense structure we recognize as past simple, indicating that it is part of a narrative text of a past event. However, the second section in this utterance was clutching his ankle and moaning softly, is key to indicate that we are no longer referring to a piece of clothing we call jumper, mainly because of our understanding of human anatomy, indicating that people are the ones that have ankles and are capable of actions such as clutching and grabbing while emitting sounds from their mouths to express pain. Because of this, the second section is activating our schematic knowledge, but also our systemic one, especially when noticing that the word his is being used to refer to a male sports person, thus allowing us to confirm that picture B is the correct answer. How do we teach how to listen? 
There are three stages and they are similar to the ones we saw in our video on reading. The first is the stage in which teachers must prepare students for listening. This is called pre-listening stage. In it, teachers recognize the importance of students' previous knowledge on the topic to be listened to. Teachers deal with the students' schematic knowledge that is connected to the text that will be introduced in the next stage while listening. Students' understanding of the world and of the topic that is contained in the audio and audiovisual material are activated by means of elicitation, brainstorming, questions and answers, and guessing games among other strategies. The main aim is to help students become familiar with the topic to be exposed later on during the while listening stage together with language features of the text or overall structure and activate prior knowledge students have. The teacher's role is to create interest, reasons for listening and the confidence to listen. The second stage is for students to listen to and become active listeners. In doing so, some activities need to be deployed for them to analyze the audio and audiovisual material. This is a why listening stage. Examples of activities in this stage are listening for gist. This is done to obtain global understanding of the text. Listening for detail, which involves getting the meaning not only of every utterance unit, but also the intentions or ideas that are implied behind those units. Number three, finally. A stage that makes use of what students have heard in a meaningful way, the post-listening stage. In here, it is expected that activities are somehow connected to the audio and audiovisual material heard or seen in the previous stage. And at the same time, students use the knowledge obtained to reflect on the topic, expanding with opinion, role plays, reactions, or alternative endings. Why are the three stages mentioned before important about pre-listening activities? Teachers need to decide what kind of listening purpose is appropriate to the material. The learners will need to tune in to the context and the topic of the audio text. Some ideas you may consider when designing at this stage include activities that allow students to express their attitudes towards that topic certainly bringing up to the front of their minds anything that they already know about the topic and showing them clues that can help them predict what they will be hearing. And it is also important to consider pre-teaching some of the less familiar language in the text. This will reduce the chances for students to get distracted or feel anxious during the listening process. Why listening activities? During this stage, students are asked to be active listeners and in doing so, their understanding of the text will be tested. Some activities to consider in this stage are listed below. Listening for gist or global understanding. Listening for specific information, detail or to infer attitude. Other examples may include responding to attitudes expressed, reflecting on what is said, taking general notes or writing down specific points. A wide repertoire of activity types is possible. For example, taking multiple choice items, filling in a chart, matching pictures with a text or drawing a picture or making notes. The type of activity chosen will depend not only on the audio material, but also on the level of students. For very young learners, for example, Taking a list of or numbering pictures in the correct order will prevent the anxiety and demotivation arising from trying to write while listening. More advanced learners, on the other hand, will be able to cope with more complex tasks. Post-listening activities. Teaching materials should allow space to do something with the knowledge students have gained after listening. In real life, we often listen to people or audio and audiovisual material to do something else as a consequence to the act of listening. Example, we normally listen to someone else's problems to give some suggestions. 
we also listen to a song to sing it along. And we sometimes listen to our boss to plan a sequence of actions to be taken. But listening can also be integrated with other skills through the development of the topic into reading, speaking, or writing activities. This allows a space to ensure that new sources of motivation arise for students other than the interest of the original audio material. For example, listening to a podcast on wild animals in the wild listening stage may be followed by a post listening activity that encourages the students to express their opinion on their favorite animal during a discussion activity. But sometimes you may want your students to listen to something and not give them any task. This gives learners the opportunity to listen in a relaxed way and enjoy the experience of listening to a foreign language. This is useful when listening to a story, a song, an explanation. Reflective task two. Look at the textbook or listening resources you use with your students and find a sequence of listening activities. Identify which of those activities correspond to pre, while, and post listening activities. Take a few screenshots of those activities and write a small analysis with your discoveries and justification. Use the literature that has been referred to in this module. This is the references list. And this is the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.